And joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a man whose uh, work you've all seen on TV, one of the great uh, writers of the show Seinfeld, also worked on another great show before that, Sports Beat with Howard Cosell. We'll find out about that, but he's got a novel out that's uh, doing real well. It's called It Won't Always Be This Great. We're joined today by Peter Melman on the telephone, Mountain California. And Peter, good to talk with you. How are you today? I'm great. Good to talk to you. I, I just uh, was watching a little TV while I ate dinner and uh, saw, saw some of your work there, Seinfeld episode. I guess I guess. Uh, that, that's never off the air. That's a good thing for you, right? <laughs> yes, we're saying that it lasts uh, well into the next millennium. <laughs> your, one of your episodes is, is coming up, I see, The Sponge here in Sarasota. So that's one you wrote, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Yeah, great, great one. Well, before we talk about the book, uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of my favorite shows growing up in New York, and I didn't know you wrote uh, on this until I saw the notes, but uh, Sports Beat with Howard Cosell. I, I always enjoyed that show with... Uh, Back in, I guess, what, the, the mid-80s, right, or early 80s, that was on. Yeah, mid to early 80s, and um, <coughs> the audience was primarily you. I, I think it might have been, <laughs> I think it was on Saturday afternoon, right? Sometimes, sometimes Sunday. Sometimes you know, like, Sunday, right? <laughs> it's one of those shows, like, you had to be flicking channels to catch it. Well, I was, a, I was a sports head, too, so I, I enjoyed it, but it, it kind of the forerunner of what uh, you do see now on ESPN and some of the other sports networks, so it just kind of a little bit yeah. ahead of its time. I think it was especially a forerunner of the, um, you know, the show that Brian Gump, the real sports with Brian Gumbel. Right, yeah, the uh, more sports journalism, uh, in-depth, uh, longer-form story. So, uh, did you enjoy doing that? It was, it was great. It was like being in the middle of the sports universe because you know Howard was so huge, and you know he could get an interview or get information on anything because um, you know athletes trusted him. He was a straight shooter. The thing about Cosell, and people, you know, probably remember him more for, you know, his bombastic Monday night football kind of things, or when he did boxing and all that, but, but when he did the journalism stuff, he was a, he was a very good interviewer. I mean, he was, uh, you know, on point. Uh, he was a lawyer, so I guess he knew how to do it that way, but I think his interviews were some of the best ever in television. Absolutely. I'm, the, the baffling thing to me is that, you know, for so long, nobody really took up the mantle. You know, it's just... Um you know, it went straight back to, uh, you know, just cover the game, just show the game. That's all anybody wants to see is the game. Right. Yeah, great show. Well, let's talk about the novel a little bit. And, of course, as I mentioned, uh, people know you work as writing for television, of course, Seinfeld and some other shows. But uh, this is a novel uh, a little bit based on, I guess, uh, your writing style, right? It's uh, kind of a guy that gets into trouble and has a bunch of adventures along the way. I don't want to give too much away. I'll let you do that. But uh, tell, tell us what you can about the plot. <laughs> Well, it's it's about um, it's about a middle-aged podiatrist who's lived a perfectly exemplary life with a wife and children, and one day he gets a little angry, commits this type, this little act of vandalism, and he's <laughs> normally the kind of person who would do something like that and immediately, you know, own up and call the police and say, "Look what I've done." But this one time, he's kind of livid, and he just decides, no, I'm going to walk away. And um, it, he walks away, and his act of vandalism ends up being seen as a hate crime. And um, he's basically telling the entire story to his college roommate, who is in a coma. <laughs> I wanted to have him tell the story to someone in a coma because it just seems like, you know, the typical middle American middle-aged man really doesn't get the floor very often That's in his right. life. You know, doesn't get the opportunity to really own a conversation. So I thought it would be great if he's telling the story to somebody who can't interrupt him. Can't, can't come back, right, tell him he did wrong. <laughs> it also takes place in uh, my old uh, neighborhood, my old uh, part of the world, the Long Island, right? Yes. yes. So I grew up up there, so uh, uh, you're from there as well, I think, right? I'm from Queens. Queens, sure. I grew up uh, right near Belmont Racetrack, Floral Park, so I know the area well. Oh, but yeah. uh, but uh, when you write a story like this, obviously it's a little different than writing a, a television script, but I, I guess you sort of write it visually in a sense, don't you? Or w what's your process? Actually, um, you know, this kind of writing comes more naturally to me than the TV writing. I really consider Seinfeld to be kind of a, a detour in my career. Mm -hmm. It was a fantastic detour, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but still, 
you know, writing full sentences is what I really do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wrote, yeah, you've written for the New York Times magazine, right, GQ, Esquire, mm -hmm. others. So you did that before you did television, so you had that background. And then, uh, like you said, the, the, uh, took a little bit of a detour into television, which is a whole different type of writing, right? You're writing for time and, and, and visually, but, yeah. uh, but... And not only that, you know, it, most of the writing I had done was kind of journalism, so, you know, I was observing the world, and when you write on Seinfeld, what you really have to do is kind of observe your own thoughts, and then you have to create an entire world as opposed to just looking at it. So right. it was a completely different exercise. Where'd you get the uh, genesis for, for this story? Any, uh, any things you saw going around Long Island or New York, or you're out in L.A. now, but did you see people well, like I this? Or? I had dinner with a friend of mine whose parents were in town, and they live on Long Island, and they were telling me that there's a part of Long Island that um, has become so populated with, with Orthodox Jewish people that, you know, if you own a store or a business in that town and you're open on the Jewish Sabbath, they will economically freeze you out. <laughs> like if you're open on a Saturday, they won't shop at your store the rest of the week because you're not supposed, you know, and there's something about imposing your beliefs on everybody else that I found incredibly offensive. And I don't know, I started writing and I was maybe 35, 40 pages in before I was even aware that I was writing a novel. <laughs> if this is your first novel, I found it hard to believe. I thought you might have written some before, but the first time you actually sat down to write a, a novel, huh? This is it, yes. Yeah, did, did you enjoy the process as opposed to, I know writing is never enjoyable until you're done with it, I, I know that myself, but do you enjoy the process of doing this? I actually really did, and, you know, I'm not the most disciplined writer in the world, but I had came up with it with an edict of just trying to get a little progress out of the way every single day, even if it was just one paragraph. So, um, you know, I did make progress every day, and I was at the point a lot of times where I couldn't wait to get back to it. You know, I'd be at dinner with friends, and I'd, I'd think of something, and I'd look, go, God, let's just get the check so I can get home and get back to work. This was, <laughs> it was incredibly pleasurable. I don't, ex I, I think, um, I can't imagine it being a ple that pleasurable again. Yeah, I've asked other you know, novelists uh, I've talked to and when they sit down to write a book, to, sometimes the characters, they've told me, uh, go in a bit of a different direction than they thought. Did that happen to you at all in this book, or did you have it pretty well uh, scripted out where you wanted it to go? No, I had no idea where I wanted it to go, and yes, the characters did dictate a lot of it. In fact, um, you know, one of the sub-genres of the book is that it kind of revolves around a marriage that really works. It's like a whole new genre, you know, the, the really good marriage. And at one point, the narrator, you know, makes a joke about his wife. And as I was writing that, I was started feeling awful, like I liked his wife so much, I didn't want to make a joke about her, so I pulled it out. <laughs> and just to let the audience know, it's a funny book. I mean, you know, the, 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 you talk about vandalism, some people think it's dramatic, but it's a very funny book, uh, as it should be. Or you, you know, you've written comedy, but when you write a, a novel, where you, can can he write jokes the same way? Is it the same type of thing, or is that a little different when you when you write a joke for people to read as opposed to hear? Yeah, you know, first of all, you know, it's. I, I think the humor ha in a novel has to be a lot more organic, mm -hmm. you know. But the audience is not expecting, you know, when somebody says, th there's not something where someone's saying what seems like a setup line and the audience is just waiting for what the joke is. Yeah. So, you know, if there's humor in... If there's humor in a novel, I think it always has to catch the reader by surprise, and that's what I was going for most of the way. Yeah, you got a lot of twists and turns uh, in the book, and that keeps the, keeps the pages turning. And before we wrap up, I did want to ask you a little bit, since we talked tonight, uh, uh, David Letterman doing his final show. As a comedy writer, uh, how, how would you kind of put uh, his place in, in television? I know you've written for Seinfeld, another great uh, you know, comedian, but uh, for Letterman, uh, what are your thoughts? Well... You know, he had a tremendous influence on his format, you know, on the talk show format. And, you know, I have to put him, you know, right behind Johnny Carson, you know, as far as, you know, a, a, a talk show format with humor. Um, I don't think you could possibly top Johnny Carson. 
But, um, you know, Letterman re certainly revolutionized the form. Yeah, no doubt. Changed, uh, changed it with uh, adding a lot more of the zany stuff. Took a little bit of Steve Allen, took a little bit of uh, some other people, but really added his own touch to it. And, and your former boss had a great uh, segment with him a couple of weeks ago in his final appearance. So it was, it was a fun to see those two guys uh, one more time on, on the talk show, Seinfeld and Letterman. Yeah, once I was on the lot talking to Jerry and Letterman was there and he came by. And then Gary Shandling was also on the lot, and he came by, and I'm standing there with these three guys, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm standing there with, like, Amphion. Yeah, I was just watching uh, uh, some of the old Larry uh, Sanders shows at Shandling. Then. Those, those were great, too, which, which really Yeah, that was, on, that was on the same lot as uh, Seinfeld. So, uh, oh, was it? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so we had these occasional summit meetings. Right. <laughs> well, you're going to get uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm telling the audience now, reading this book, it's called It Won't Always Be This Great. Uh, Peter Melman is the author of it. And uh, if you liked uh, his work on television, you're going to like this book as well. And, Peter, I know uh, it, it recently came out. Do you, you have a website you want to direct people to? I know you can get it at all the books shops. Do you have your own web page or anything? Uh, my website is pmelman.com, M-E-H-L-M-A-N. And... Um, you know, I think there's somebody who occasionally updates it. <laughs> well, Peter, a real pleasure to talk to you. I've enjoyed your work uh, on television, and as I say, going back to the Howard Cosell day. So uh, even though I didn't quite know uh, who you were then, I'm, I'm glad I got to meet you tonight. But thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.